you are joining us for the Just Too Easy in Foundation Stage for C2K webinar. So my name is Nikki Kimball. I'm the educational consultant here at Just Too Easy. I have been working for the company for the best part of 18 months now. Um, so a bit of my background, just to give you a bit of context. I was a uh, SEMD teacher for the best part of a decade, and then I worked for the local authority as a computing advisor. And I've since joined Just Too Easy. So I have the pleasure of delivering this and sort of giving you some hints and tips um, and activity ideas to use Just Too Easy in your foundation stage classrooms. So I am joined uh, by my wonderful team in the background. We've got Danny Young, who is our MD. We've got Paul Wright, who is our consultant, and he will actually be taking over my maternity cover uh, come September. So you will probably get to know Paul a bit better over the coming year. Um, and we've also got Sophie, who will be running the Just Too Easy support. And what Sophie doesn't know isn't worth knowing. Let's put it that way. So just a bit of housekeeping, just so you know what's going to happen during this session. We are going to try and keep to a 4.15 finish. Sometimes that's easier said than done, but I, I am tr trying to be more strict with myself recently. So that is the time I'm aiming for. Now we have muted you all and we have muted all your videos. So that's not to say that we don't want to hear your questions. Um, so any questions, if you could ask them via the chat, and if you could direct message just to easy support. Now, because I'm running the presentation, I won't be able to check my chat. So please don't message me directly. Sophie will manage those questions. Any questions that come in that they answer, they are going to then publish out to everyone. So you will be able to see the questions that are being asked by other people as well. The session is being recorded. And we are going to make these available at justtooeasy.com forward slash webinars. And I'm going to show you that page in a second. Right. I've rejigged my presentation, so I'm trying to remember which, which direction I'm going in. So, as I said, we have recorded all of our webinars. They can be found here at justtooeasy.com forward slash news forward slash webinars C2K. You have your own dedicated page within our website. This is our website. Um, you can see here, I'm hoping some of you might have joined us for the introductory webinar of, um, last week and the week before. If you didn't manage to catch that, there is a recording there. So that's, I think that's about 50 minutes long. So please feel free to have a watch of that. We will be recording all future webinars and they will be posted there. So. If there are future webinars, as you can see, advertised down here, a bit of a shameless plug along the right hand side. If there are webinars that you're interested in, but you can't make the sessions, rest assured, you'll be able to still be able to access those sessions through the recordings. Right, just a little bit of, um, of an explanation. I am expecting soon <laughs> uh, a baby who is not only stealing all my calories, it's also stealing a lot of my oxygen. So if I do sound out of breath and I have to sort of stop for a few seconds, please just bear with me. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been hard work this week, let's put it that way. Right, objectives for this session. So we're gonna have a quick Just Too Easy overview um, and have a think about how to access Just Too Easy through C2K. We're going to have quite a nice session around child created content. So what you can get your pupils to do to create, to demonstrate their learning um, through JIT. We're going to have a look at creating teacher led activities. So what you can create as a teacher that will support the learning in class, be that whole school, whole class activity, be that smaller groups or individual. We're also going to have a look at using Just Too Easy for observations and as a more professional tool. So uh, noting observations, making assessment and feedback and that kind of thing. And I am going to leave a session at the end for Q&As. So please, as I've said, I know there's people sort of coming in as I'm talking. Just to reiterate, if you do have any questions, can you direct message those to Just Too Easy support? So if you'll be able to answer those. If those questions aren't answered, 
um, we will be offering a Q&A session at the end. So you can pose your questions, try and put me on the spot. I do enjoy being put on the spot at the end of a session. So if you want to save them to the end, you can. And then of course, we're gonna signpost you about where you can access further support and help should you need it. Right, so how do we access Just Too Easy? Basically, Just Too Easy is a, a cloud-based um, learning platform. It's designed for education, unlike some other potential softwares that might have been designed for business and then shoehorned into education. We are specifically designed for pupils and especially for some of our younger pupils. So we're hoping to sort of show you how your foundation stage kids can use this really easily. All you need is a networked or a Wi-Fi connected device. It works on anything with a Wi-Fi connection. So laptops, tablets, iPads, phones, Chromebooks. Uh, we had Xboxes, PS5s. Um, we had lots of children accessing this in lots of different ways during the recent school closures. So as long as you've got a Wi-Fi connection, you can access our tools. So that means we're accessible anywhere. So you're not constrained to the classroom. You could, as long as your Wi-Fi extends, you could take us out on a tablet and take photographs out in your forest schools. You could go out and around your playground. So it's not a static um, software. It is built around a cloud-based storage area. So uh, with unlimited storage, so you don't have to worry about deleting things and keeping things you know, sort of uh, streamlined. And you can share and collaborate with any user, any class, any group within your school. Now, in terms of access specifically with C2K, so we're very, very proud to now be offered on C2K. That is free access. Uh, we are normally a subscription site, so there is quite a big saving there. And it can be found through the C2K My School area. So you'll find us within the all area, the launch panel, view all, online learning tab. And we're just here. Now we are, we have been promised that we may be one of those nine pinned apps that you see within my school. So if we're not yet, then keep an eye out for those because we might be. So that will just make it finding us a little bit easier. Now, the other option you've got, of course, is you can go to j2e.com. That's our website. And you can access us using this EA button here, and that will take you direct to the C2K login page. You can use your C2K logins. Your pupils can use their C2K logins as well. Now, I'm also aware that there may be some nursery schools that are joining us who may not have C2K logins. If that is the case, can you um, just drop us an email at support at j2e.com? We can set you up with a manual account and we can sort you out. So don't worry, you still have access as well. Now, as well as that, just sort of harking back to my own classroom experience, one of the biggest barriers in getting your foundation stage children on and using technology is the logging in process itself. Now, I don't know what your C2K logins look like for children. I remember using logins that were you know, 20 characters long with apps and special characters and auto-generated, computer-generated passwords with the bane of my life. So we wanted to make it a lot more streamlined for your pupils. And part of that is we have created a login card and this is brilliant. It's based around a QR, QR code. Excuse me, my nose is running. It's not my breathing, it's my nose. Um, and it just means the students can scan this and it bypasses the password and they don't have to put in any usernames. Brilliant for some of the really small children that may not be at that level where they can input, they can find things on the keyboard and type it in. So to create your QR codes, these can be done on an individual basis or a class basis, we're gonna go via the launch pad. So if you haven't been on Just Too Easy, when you log in, this is the launch pad. So this is where you will land, every user will land on the launch pad or J2 launch, it has a few different names. 
and we can go to dashboard. Now this is a teacher only tool, so it won't be on your pupil account. We can click J2 dashboard and this takes us into the, the back end. So this is kind of where you can fiddle around with things. And I'm gonna show you a few things that might be quite helpful for your smaller pupils. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the manage users tabs. You can see here, we've got a number of different tabs. There we go. Out of breath already. And you can see here, we'll have all of your pupils listed. Now, because you're through C2K, all your users are, are auto-generated. So you don't need to worry about adding or deleting users. It should all be seamlessly done. And they should all be in the right classes as well. Now, what we can do is we can, if we want to, highlight a student. So for example, Bobby here, and we can, we can create a QR code, code specifically for Bobby by clicking on the QR code there. Now we're given two different options. I'm not gonna go with the class code at the moment. Um, I am just going to focus on the user login codes. So I'm gonna press this. That will generate that button, uh, that QR code specifically for Bobby. So what that means is Bobby can now scan that with a, a phone or a QR code. So let me just do this on my phone just to show you. So you open up your camera app and it will log Bobby straight in. So you can see there it's logged in. He hasn't had to add in a password. I hope you can see that on my webcam. Um, he hasn't had to put in a password or a username. It's logged in straight in. Now we can, instead of doing that in, on an individual basis, we can generate whole classes. And to do that, all we do is just click on the QR code without highlighting a student. We can choose a class and that will generate user login codes for all of our students. This is brilliant, especially when you're doing things like observations, or if you're working with students on a smaller group basis, you could have this printed out, maybe laminated if you really want to. Tell I'm an ex-teacher, I used to love my lamination. Um, and you could keep that as a record so that you've got it all in one place. Just remember it does log pupils in, so you've got to be a little bit careful about data protection, that kind of thing. Um, and you can keep those ready to be used however you want to distribute them. They could be in book bags, they could be in their drawers, they could be, I don't know, on a lanyard around their neck, <laughs> whatever you want to do, you could have these ready to go. So hopefully that will make using just too easy with, you know, some of these smaller children, when they're sort of four or five, it is quite difficult. So hoping that makes that a little bit easier for you. The other thing I'm going to talk about quickly, just before we get into some of the creativity side of it, which I know you're probably chomping at the bit to get to, is personalising just too easy. Now, if we have a look, I'm going to show you Harry. He's my demo account. And there is almost an overwhelming amount of buttons there for Harry. And I'm not going to lie, a lot of them aren't appropriate for foundation stage or younger children. But what we can do is we can switch some of these buttons off, essentially. So if I go back to my launch pad as a teacher, and again, I'm going to go back to my dashboard. Now, dashboard is really anything to do with the structure of Just Too Easy. OK, so you can set up your own teaching groups and stuff like that. But we've got this button that says J2 launch. If I press that. I've got all of these. These are all of the titles that our students have access to. So some of them, for example, J2 Bloggy, uh, just are not appropriate for foundation stage or even key stage one. J2 Bloggy is all around creating blog sites. And it's built around WordPress, so it really isn't appropriate. So we might not want our students to access that at all. So what we can do is we can click on J2 Bloggy. You can see that it highlights it. And these are all the classes here that have access to J2 Bloggy. Now, all I need to do is just untick class one for example, you know, that could be P1 or P2 or even a nursery class. And now that has changed that instantaneously. So there's J2 Bloggy on Harry's account. If I refresh his page, you can see that's 
been removed completely. Now, my background is SEMD. As I said, a lot of my pupils were quite severely autistic. So for me, I would, I would literally just reduce that to maybe three or four tiles or even just switch on the one tile that I want them to use that day. So you can do that. You can completely streamline this launch pad if you want to. The other thing that we can do is we can create tiles for our students personalized tiles. Now I explained how to do this in the last webinar, in the introductory webinar. So if you haven't been able to access that, um, we will put that webinar link. I think it's already in the chat already for you. So please have a look. The other alternative is anything that you're wondering how to do and I don't cover today, we do have this help tile here and you can ask a question. So personalized tiles, I'm pretty sure if I just put tiles, can see here uh, it's possible to personalize so there is a, a, a quite a big bit on adding a tile there so you could do that as well so we've got some really nice links there to you know mini beast activities and things like that so that's a real time saver if you're working with smaller children because they can access websites without the painful process of getting them to write a url always painful doesn't matter how good they are at literacy Right, back to my presentation. I'm getting kicked in the ribs as I speak. Okay, so the next part of the session is going to be in three distinct uh, sections. We are going to start by looking at JIT, and we're really going to unpick that quite a lot. I dipped into that in the last webinar, but we're going to have a look at some of those apps um, in depth now. We're going to have a look at J2E5 uh, for teacher created activities and we're actually going to dip into J2 whiteboard as well which is going to have a little bit of a look at that and then we're going to look at observation side of things so we're actually going to look at um, J2 PDF and then using learning conversations and J2 review for your wraparound feedback and assessment okay so let's get started with my favorite bit creating stuff with the kids so getting them to use the technology themselves now what we're really going to focus on is JIT sometimes called JIT 5 sometimes called JIT the just too easy infant toolkit that's what JIT stands for okay it is geared towards some of your younger students there are elements that are still appropriate for your older students as well now what I've done is I've dragged up some uh, memories of, you know, how I would teach in class. It's just been a little bit of a, it's been a while. Um, but I thought I would base all this around an all about me topic. So imagine that I'm teaching all about me. So we are going to create some art. We're going to look at some data and we're going to do some animation. And then we're going to wrap it all up in a nice ebook kind of format. So... I'm going to do this from a child's perspective. So I'm going to do it as if Harry was creating this activity. And then we're going to have a look at how you can access that as a teacher and sort of have a look at your students' work. So this is Harry's account. He is going to open up a JIT. And there we go. So if this is the first time you've seen JIT, let me just have a drink quickly. It's a really sim simplistic icon based software for your students to use it's designed to be consistent so we have the eight different apps and you can see they're built around tabs so the tabs are reminiscent of um, an explorer um, an internet tab so you can see kind of get students used to using tabs and flicking between them each tab has um, a consistent beginning. So we choose a template to start with and they're prompted to choose that. And it has the consistent buttons on the left-hand side. You'll also have, with each app, you'll have individual um, app things that they can do. So for data, you have your charts on the left-hand side. For painting, you have all your paint tools. So it does stay very consistent. The students learn that they know where to look on the screen at any particular time whilst they're doing something. Now, the other thing that I find really useful and is so simple, but it, it would be really useful in a classroom <clears throat> is the fact that each app has its own surrounding color. So you see turtle, it's green, paint is blue. 
So as a teacher, there's invariably a couple of students that go off on a bit of a tangent and decide to start being click happy. So you can keep track by standing at the back of the class and just see which students are on the right app that you're directing them to use. Always useful. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about this all about me and we're gonna start by creating content and we're gonna wrap it all up in an ebook. So we're gonna start with paint, which is possibly one of my favorites. I'm just gonna move this down here. And it will offer up templates. So we have a number of different templates that you can choose from. They're a brilliant starting point for your students. So, you know, you might be having an under the sea topic. So you could start with a template to use that there. They've also got colouring in options, so that's nice for getting students to think about, you know, different colours and um, formatting and that kind of thing. And there's also a transparent background, brilliant for creating your own characters. As well as that, we can choose pictures. So your students can draw over pictures that they've already got in their My Finals. They can draw over things that you've shared as a teacher. So it could be maybe that you've shared a colouring in sheet or you've shared, um, I don't know, something around your topic. So your students can access that. So you can see here, I've got a Dear Santa letter that I set as an activity for my students at Christmas. And they could draw over the top of that and add clip art and writing and that sort of thing. So that was quite a nice activity. They can do a Google search. So it could be maybe, um, I don't know, they look for faces maybe. Okay, so they can have a look at different pieces of um, pictures and art and um, different images. They can load from external sources. So brilliant if you know, you've know you shared something on a local drive within school. And they can also take pictures straight in. So here we go. It, I didn't think it was going to, it's because I'm uh, streaming live. But you can have them take a picture of themselves draw over the top. So that might be a nice option if they do maybe self portraits. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a blank template for now. And I'm gonna draw just a very quick face. Please don't judge me on my um, art skills. Um, so we're gonna start with just using the drawing tools. Now we've got a number of different preset colors, which is useful for students that are just beginning to use colors and recognize colors. But we do also have these two buttons down here. So we have a texture tool and a color picker. Now, if I press this color picker here, where it's got the dropper, it gives me more options for my colors. So you're not restricted to those 12 colors. You can use any color that you want. And we're gonna choose, we're gonna try and choose a fairly skin tone color. Here we go, let's go for that, okay. And once I've chosen it, I can just press that. And I'm going to, oh, it hasn't selected that. There we go, let's click OK. And you can see it's selected that colour now. I can change the shape of my brush. I'm going to make that a nice big circle because we're going to do a self-portrait. Just to make it a little bit bigger. And I can use the fill tool. There we go. Now I'm just going to do this very quickly. So I'm going to use my brush. I'm going to give it two eyes. I'm going to try and give you a nice authentic early years feel to things. I'm going to make it look as horrific as possible. On purpose, of course. There we go. And a smiley face, because it's always nice to have a smiley face. Now, this would be a good opportunity for you to discuss, you know, things like feelings and emotions and differences in faces and all that sort of thing. Um, so it really opens up your discussions that you can have with your students. And I'm going to give myself some nice hair. There we go. I told you art is not my forte. Uh, I'm gonna show you the texture tools now. So we've got these here. And again, if we choose this button here, it gives us a range of different textures. And there's some really nice ones. So you can use you know, things like leaves if they're doing an outdoor theme. There's bricks, there's all sorts of um, different patterns. I'm gonna stick, I'm gonna grab some bricks. There we go. So I've selected that. Now I've got two options here. I can increase my brush, so that makes my brush bigger, and I can decrease the pattern itself. Now I've also got the fill tool option and that just restricts it so we can choose how big the pattern is. And then we can fill that. So there we go, we've got my face against a brick wall. How delightful. Now we've also got options here. We can use our clip art. 
we can use speech bubbles. So if I click on a speech bubble, I could say, uh, I could type my name is Nikki, okay? And we can make that bigger or smaller. We can flip that speech bubble around, okay? So they can start using their literacy skills as well if they want to. There is also a writing library and there's lots and lots of different picture libraries. So they can make some really nice illustrations and really explore you know, the world around them and representing that in a visual manner. It's really nice for art and design. They can also search for images. So it might be, I don't know, let's think about um, a laptop maybe. That was just a very random thing to think of. So as soon as I hit that, it comes up with all sorts of different images. So you can search for anything. Again, brilliant for tying in that literacy, you know, getting kids to maybe think about how things are spelt and searching and then opening up that e-safety side of things. You know, how do we safely search for things? So there's lots of things you can do. So that's paint. We can rename that. So we could say self-portrait. We've also got the audio record at the top. Now we can just hit that and it will record the audio. So that's brilliant if maybe students have created a picture of that themselves and they want to record some script to go with that. They might want to explain what they like to do and you know how they like to spend their time or their family, or there might be stuff that they can't write down, but they can discuss. Brilliant for your speech and language and your communication. And it's always saved separately as a separate sound file. So you could just say, Allow, and we just hit record. My name's Nikki, and this is my self-portrait. Just to give you an example, there we go. And I'm gonna click OK. So that links to that particular document. Now, Harry is going to save that document there, and that will save into his My Files area, which we're gonna look at in a second. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit more. So we're gonna go with Turtle. So Turtle's all about the beginnings of coding, computational thinking, your algorithmic thinking, um, debugging, problem solving. Brilliant. And I know it's not specifically part of the foundation stage, but it is good to allow students that option to tinker and to really just try things out, make mistakes. How can we correct it? So it's that language that you're using with them. Now, these are templates. And they're brilliant. They do actually increase in levels in terms of um, things that are harder. Um, it starts quite easy with the big bad wolf and gets progressively more difficult. So I'm going to choose one of the most difficult ones. I'm going to go for the town. And it's just a person that's walking around town. So we're going to drop the pen down. So you can see as I press any of these buttons, the algorithm will start to build up here on our script. I'm going to make them walk forwards. There we go. I'm just going to do this very quickly to give you an idea. And there we go. So they can drag the algorithm. They can test how can they get from the supermarket to the park? How could they go from the houses to they can drag this person around different starting points. Really good for your directional language. Really good for your problem solving. You might get kids to do this in a group on the whiteboard and working together. It can it has so many different links. So just to see if that algorithm works, they then press play and double check that it works. And there we go. OK, so that's your beginnings of your coding. Again, we're going to save that. That will save into their My Files area. So they will have that as evidence. We're going to move on to Pictogram now and thinking about all about us. We are going to go with how pupils go to school. So they might want to do a tally chart, you know, thinking about going around their um, their peers in class and ask them how they get to school. There is a template for this. You can create your own pictogram if you've got variations that you want to use. You know, the usual suspects are all there. So, you know, what pets have you got? What's your favorite food? And what's the weather today? We're gonna to go with the journey. Now, it has four preset ones. That's not to say you have to stick with that. We can add in additional. So if we click edit, we can press plus, add in an additional, um, column there and we can search and I'm going to you could search in the transport if you want to but I'm actually going to search for a scooter because let's face it more and more children are scooting to school now 
as soon as I hit enter, it brings up loads of different options. There's even a segue there if you wanted to segue to school. It is the modern way, apparently. Um, I'm going to click on scooter. As soon as I've clicked on it, it will add it in. Now, don't worry, it is giant. But what we can do is we can hover over that box there. You can see it's turned red. I click on that box and it's just going to shrink it back down. So you don't need to worry about that. We can change the label so we can go scooter. And that's it. Now, if you were to, to create this and save it as a template for your students, you could untick the edit so they wouldn't be able to edit it further, or you could leave that open if you want them to add extra columns. So we could get Harry to maybe do this in um, draft form. He might write down a tally chart, for example, um, and then he can move that data electronically onto his J2E account. So you could say quite a few of them come by car, judging by the school that's not very far from my house, most of them come by car. Um, a few of them walk and maybe two scooters. And there we go. So there's our pictogram. Again, really simple, really easy. They can rename it. They could record some scripts so they could analyze that data now. So thinking about managing data, you could analyze, well, we, we can see from the pictogram that more people travel by car than scoot. So it might be that a child can't write that down yet, but they can still observe that um, from this particular pictogram. You can save that as an image as well as a working file. So this button here saves it as a working file. So the pupils will be able to come back into this particular document and edit it further. So I'm going to save that, but I'm also going to save it as an image just so you can see the difference in the two. Going out of race knots. Um, the last one I'm going to do is a chart. Again, brilliant for your mathematics numeracy unit. Uh, brilliant for managing data and even sort of things like working in teams and, and all that kind of, um, all those skills. Again, you've got templates you can use. We're actually going to create a blank one and we're going to have a think about eye colour in class. So we're going to write some eye colours. Now this could be something that you do as a whole class. It could be something that um, you do as an individual basis. Could be gathered around the whiteboard. I can't think of anyone. Blue, brown, blue, hazel, of course. There's always that one person that says, I don't have brown eyes, I have hazel. Now you'll see that it's actually pulled some of these colours already. So it is quite clever in that respect. We're going to pick grey for the grey eyes, green for the green, and we might go, um, what colour is hazel? Light brown, there we go. Okay. Now it hasn't got anything that hasn't updated the. Um, the chart just yet, but what we can do is we can change the column title. We could say eye colour and we could change the numbers. So most of them are going to have brown, aren't we? Boring brown. Uh, four blue, and you can see it updates in real time. Two grey, two green, and then there's six hazel. There we go. And there's our chart. Really easy, really simple. We've got the different chart types on the left. Your students can click the different chart types. They can have a look and have that discussion about how is the data best represented? You know, does a line chart show it? Some of you quite often not. Uh, does a block chart, does it look better as a bar chart? Do I need to get rid of the table completely? They can mix and match those chart types. Again, what we're gonna do is we're going to, if you wanted to, we could rename it and do the audio. But for time's sake, we're going to click save. And we've also got the option to save as image. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to collate it all together in an ebook. So we're going to go to mix. Now, this allows you to mix different pages from the different apps. So you can see the color here will sort of represent which app it's linked to. So I'm going to choose a paint picture. And I'm going to import the picture that we've just created. And I'm going to do that by clicking on this button here, which is the load button. Now they can draw things straight in if they want to, um, but you can see here, there's that self-portrait that we've just made. We can click on that, that's added in there. We could um, write our name. So we could say, um, Nikki by Harry. Less of a self-portrait, more of a portrait. <laughs> So there we go. We can add additional pages and we can mix and match those pages. So we did a turtle document. So we might want to change the color to green. Click tick. 
that allows us to add in a turtle document. So again, we're going to go to the load button and we're going to load in that turtle document. So your students could write about what they learned. So we, we looked at dot, 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 and you could type that in. You could add in a chart page. There you go. We've got different layouts as well. So we can add in that chart that we've just created, that eye colour. So eye colour in class one, for example. You get the idea. And then we can save that. Now, I'm really running behind time. This is taking far longer than I thought. So that will save into Harry's My Files area. So you can see there, there's all of his work. You can see the charts. If I click on that, it will open up that chart. We can go into it again and edit it further. Um, we've got the self-portrait. We've got the audio that we've recorded. Okay, and this is the mixed document. So that opens up into that ebook. Now, as a teacher, it's really important to keep an eye on what my students are doing. And what we've done in Just Too Easy, off your launch pad, and this is only available in teacher accounts, is we've got this lovely button called Pupil Files. So if we tick that, tick that, if we click that, we have access to all of the classes in school. Green ones are registration classes and purple ones are teaching groups. Okay, and I did discuss the difference in the last webinar and there is a help tile if you want to set up teaching groups. And we can click list files if you want to. That will show us the most recent pieces of work. We can see all of Harry's work here coming in. And I can click on that and I can see that instantaneously, really quickly. I can flick through the pages. I've always got that over the shoulder view of what Harry's doing. And I can do that for any student. So if I unlist my files, I can go into a class. So this could be my class. You can see the different pupils here. Can see Harry's clearly my demo student. <laughs> He's got 193 pieces of work now. I really should start using a different student. I can see all of Harry's work there. Now the other nice thing that I can do is I can offer feedback. So I can do that. Here's his book. As I hover over it, I've got the speech bubble, my learning conversation. So I can talk to Harry about his learning. I could ask him more questions. So I could say, um, can't even think of a question so let's just say great book harry okay hit enter and harry will get a notification about that you can record audio brilliant if you've got students that literacy wise they wouldn't be able to read um and students can ask questions of you as well so they can initiate that conversation it could be that you ask them for two stars and a wish you know what have you done well and what would you do next time so you have got that peer assessment uh, self-assessment, teacher assessment, and that feedback as well. So you've got that all wrapped up in a nice, a nice sort of packaged bow. So the thing we can do is we can click progression statements. Now, at the moment, the Northern Ireland progression statements aren't loaded. Um, there we go. We are getting those from C2K, so they will be loaded, um, including foundation. Um, at the moment, we've only got the England early, early years foundation stage. But just to give you an idea, this piece of work, for example, might have been, it's not a COEL, it's an early years goal. It might have been literacy. We can see children read simple sentences and phonic knowledge. We could say, right, he's working at expected for that. Writing, he might be working at emerging. So the orange ones are the ones that are ticked for that particular document and the black ones are previous um, pieces of work that he's achieved. And that's all we have to do. So then we can go out. And I just have to refresh that page. Go back to Harry again. And you can see those targets are there and they're linked to that particular piece of work. So I've jumped ahead, jumped around a little bit. So that is child created content, teacher created resources. So these are just some ideas that you might want to use in your classroom. Now I've used mostly J to be five in this respect, and you can create some really nice stuff that's linked to topic, things that you're doing in class. So I've got things like, and I've linked these to your um, foundation stage curriculum, understanding of the world. Um, we can click on this. It opens it up. This is J2E5 for those of you that haven't seen J2E5 before. It has two modes. It has view mode and edit mode. 
that's what's really nice about it is you can leave it in view mode so this in view mode is just a jigsaw puzzle so your students can move the pieces this would be brilliant on a whiteboard getting your students you know just to come up and have a go and they can click that um picture back together i'm not very good at puzzles i think i've just realized this there we go they've got a scatter button as well so they can reset it we can add in audio instructions and we can link text to sound as well. Okay. Now we're not gonna be able to get into this in very much depth. There is a really good help article in the help document, um, in the help tile. But all this is, is just a picture that's added. So I'm gonna show you very quickly. So activity two, I'm gonna add in a picture here. I've already made one earlier in my best blue peter fashion so there's my picture that i created in jit as a teacher i can move that around on the screen i can make it bigger or smaller i can resize it i can um, swivel it but you'll see as i've clicked on it i've got these options here i'm going to convert to jigsaw just to show you and um, it converts it straight away okay you've got the option to convert to photo if you've made a mistake but you've got all of these buttons here so you can add in a scatter button so that allows you to reset it really quickly you could have a solve button so that allows it to you know students to solve it at the hit of the button you've also got scatter on load so that will scatter it immediately you can change the pieces so if you want to make it more difficult or easier depending on the student and then if we go to view there we go there is our puzzle we can scatter and there we go. Now, I didn't put the hint on this one, which is why it's a slightly more difficult than this one that has got the hint. Then all I need to do is just either save that into my my files and have that as a whole class activity, or I could share that with my students. And I will show you how to do that in a second. There we go. I'm gonna show you this one because I'm conscious of the time. This is a J2 whiteboard activity. Now, J2 whiteboard, very similar to J2E5, but it is designed for your whiteboard. And there's certain things in it that make it very good for use with a whiteboard. Little things like this button here, you can move this bar, the, sort of, um, the toolbar, to the bottom of your page. There we go. Now, if I remember rightly, foundation stage, your, uh, your whiteboards tend to be about six inches off the floor. So that's you know, going to be useful. You can either have it at the top or at the bottom. And you've also got this where you can drag this bar around. So this allows you to add changes onto the page. So you can draw things. So you can get students up at the board drawing, using their pen skills if they want to, if you've got pens that work on your board. You creating mark making highlighting texts you can delete things straight away so you don't need a keyboard either that was always something that sort of i fell foul of is writing things on on the board generally required a keyboard so you don't need that okay you can embed things you can add media this is a screen shade so we've got a nice activity to do as a whole class can they use the clues to figure out what is this behind here you know it has like two eyes and it has three hearts. It must be an octopus, of course. So you can create some really nice activities really quickly. I'm not gonna have time to show you the rest. <laughs> As always, I'm getting uh, bogged down. Um, but I will share these um, documents. In fact, I can pop this uh, in the chat. Vicky, what we might do, um, we did it with Alistair's uh, session on uh, the other day, was um, uh, we, we've got sort of to the end of the time and if people need to leave, then they can leave um, because the session is recorded and it will be on our website. Um, but obviously mm -hmm. anyone that is able to stay, very welcome to stay. And that just buys you a few, a little bit of extra time, Nikki, if you want to, if you're still in your stride and you want to show a little bit more, then uh, please carry on. That's a very good plan. Thank you, Daddy. Yes, okay. that sounds like a good idea. So if you do need to head out the back door, feel free. We are going to put this recording on our website. So please, um, if you do need to go and I will carry on and I'll just show you because some of these activities are really nice activities to do with your students. So I've got two more J2E5 um, files and these are just the things that I knocked up really quickly. And you'll probably see, see I was an SEMD 
teacher, I like to keep my backgrounds very simple and clutter free. Uh, once an SEND teacher, always an SEND teacher. So this is just a pattern making activity, got great links to maths. You could use this with communication, get your students to have a think about colours and patterns and discussing it and problem solving with their friends. And I've just, all I've done is draw some boxes here. So we've got, you know, um, shape tools here. I added in some um, pictures and I just copied these from the internet. And all I've done is the students are expected to then create their own patterns. So we can draw red, yellow, red, yellow, very reminiscent of the physical activity that they would complete using, you know, their matching activities or their, their sorting bears or sorting camels or whatever sorting object it is. And this is very simply made just by adding in a picture. And I've got this button down here, which does get missed sometimes, but is a brilliant button for making activities. And that's the details button. So when I press the details button, you'll see I, all I've done is I've ticked copies and it allows infinite clones of that particular photograph. OK. And once that's ticked, you can make, as I said, infinite clones. So just to give you an idea, let's add in. I'm not sure if we can find a, a bear, but we'll try. I could just try some clip art. There we go. So we'll try this bear. I know it doesn't match. Oh, that's useful. There we go. So I can click that bear, I go to details, make sure it's a copyable bear, go to view, and now I can add that bear into that activity. Very simple activity. If I add it in by mistake, all I need to do is just click on that bear and hit delete, click and delete, and there we go. Now to share that with my students, all I would have to do is click save. So it's saved into my, my files as a teacher. And then what we need to do is we need to share it with our teachers. We can do that using the share button. Now we can either do that within the J2E5 document or we can go to my files. When we go to my files, there's the activity. I can click the green eye and I can go to share instead. It's both the same thing. Now we can share that with individuals, school groups, classes, and I'm just gonna share that with my class. Now my class would access that. There is a number of different ways that we can do that. We can link that to a tile, we can put that in a homework, or we can just have it in the shared file. So now Harry logs in, he can go to list files to show the most recent ones, and there's that early years um, activity that he can create. So he can create his own patterns there. So really easy to share and collaborate. Now, the last one I'm gonna show you is this curriculum links, very similar activity. And I just made these movable instead of copies in that details button, I just made them movable. So there's just one and they have to sort them, but they can move them around. So again, that's a J2E5 file. So very simple activities, but things that you can do as a whole class around the whiteboard or individually, you could have a tablet out in the classroom and they work on it individually, it's entirely up to you. Right, observations in the teacher preference tool, professional tools. So what I've done is I have created some, um, and these are just J2 PDF files, and it allows you to create observations for your students. So all it is, is I've just added some boxes in some text but what we can do is we can share that to a pupil account or we could use this as an observation on a tablet, for example. Now, what's nice about these is you can add in pictures that have been taken on a tablet or a phone or um, any of that sort of mobile device and they can be added in. So, for example, if you had a photograph that you had taken, for example, this photograph here, you can add that in as part of the observation, maybe demonstrating what that pupil has done. Uh, the picture says a thousand words and all that. You've also got things like sound recording. Now that's brilliant if you've got some evidence that is recorded as sound. So your students, you could get them to talk into, the, uh, into your tablet and record an audio. Maybe they say a sentence about what they've learned, maybe 
you record them talking to a peer. So you have that bit of evidence that just strengthens that observation. So these are really easily made. You can click, um, you can create them and click save. You can also share with other colleagues. So it may be that these are shared you know, across um, your key stage and you'll, you use that as a template. Now, just to give you an idea about how you would create a template, this is a, a Word document that I've got in my account. Just wait for it to open. Now, we could use this as a Word document. It's a little bit restrictive, though. So what I can do is I can change this into a J2 PDF. So I'm going to do that by going to File, and I'm going to go to PDF, and that's going to save that. So J2 PDF, um, I think we started to touch on it. I, I kind of rejigged my introductory webinar. So I think the second two were slightly different from the first two in that we did, we did touch on J2 PDF and the recording that is on the website does touch on J2 PDF. It's a brilliant tool. It allows you to make fully editable documents for your students. They can write over things, they can follow worksheets, you know, things like dot to dots, you could create um, documents like that. It is brilliant. So we can drag in that PDF that I have just downloaded. I'm going to add it in for my downloads. There's my um, foundation stage observation record I've just created. And that's going to add that into j 2 5 So there we go. It's a J2 PDF, which might not seem like much, but whereas before we had to stay within the formatting of the Word document, now what we can do is we can circle things, we can write which children are involved using the um, A button. We could save that as a template. So let's go for observation template. There we go. I could share that with a colleague. So if I go to the share button, I can go and share that with Mr. Cameron, for example. So now we both have the same observation template. I can use that with a student, for example. So I could circle an area of learning. We might be looking at maths and number. I can type there. I could say it's Harry. I can type some information. I could say Harry was observed dot, dot, dot. I can record audio if it's easier. I could record myself dictating the observation. Quite often it's time consuming to type things. So you could record audio throughout the observation and then type it up later. I can save that as under a different name. So it will save separately because we've made changes. So I could say Harry observation. I could put a date in if I want to, and that is now saved in my file. So you can see those are two separate documents. So that's just a very um, quick suggestion about what you could do for your observations. Now you can use your QR code logins as well. So you could log in as a student, conduct an observation and save it into their pupil files as well. Last little bit, I promise. <laughs> Gathering evidence, we all know that um, with a play-based curriculum that photographic, video and audio evidence are very important. So what we have done is we have added in a camera button and that is within um, a laptop. So you can see this is a laptop launch pad but also on tablets. So it does look slightly different, but we have tried to keep it consistent. Now I know a lot of schools do use mobile devices as, as a way of capturing evidence, but what's really nice is you don't have to take it onto the tablet and then upload it. You can do it all in one seamless go as long as you're logged in. So here on the tablet, you can see if we log in, we can use the camera and we can take photographs that save straight into the My Files area. As well as that, we've also got this button up here when you're accessing on a tablet, which allows you to record audio straight in. So again, you can capture evidence of maybe conversations that students are having together or group work, or there's lots of different options. You can take video straight in. So it's really quick, really easy, really time saving. Now, last little bit. We did try and link, I was going to do this at the beginning, but I'm glad I sort of left it to the end. 
Using the ICT curriculum, you do have a fantastic curriculum in Northern Ireland. It's far better than anything we've got here in England. And you've got your five E's that should be familiar. So I just tried to very quickly map out where certain elements of our um, toolkit fit in with your pre-level one using the ICT curriculum. So it's things like Express. If I was to be teaching Express in a classroom now, as I've demonstrated, you'd be using JIT mostly for that child created content because it allows you to paint, create voiceovers. They, they can be very creative in an expressive manner. The exchange element of the uh, side of things, you know, teaching beginnings of communication is really well done through learning conversations. We do have J2 message, probably not, um, not geared towards early years, but you could try that if you want to. Explore, so using certain digital sources, you'd be using your J2 launch and your My Files, shared files, pupil files. Evaluate, um, you know, having a think about how they've used technology and respond to questions that you may ask as a teacher, very much around geared around learning conversations. And lastly, exhibit. Now we looked at that in the last webinar. Anything children create can be pushed to J2 Webby, which is your class blog. Um, so have a look at that. That is via the publish button. And we have done a bit in the last webinar. So please have a look at that if you want to know more. Little activities that you might want to consider. So linking it to the rest of the curriculum. It's such a cross curricular tool. So it's things like using a mixed document to teach about building stories and uh, creating settings and characters and, and planning out their learning and their literacy. Using um, number squares, you can drag those in as a searchable, as a searchable um, picture using Google search. Creating habitat um, activities with the drag and drop. So we've just had a look at that. So that's just got a little bit more detail in it. So they can drag the, the um, characters, the mini beasts onto the right area. Personal development, and mutual understanding, a huge part of your curriculum. So this is just a, a puzzle that I drew and some statements and they can fill that in with whichever statement is um, appropriate to them. So things like, I love working by myself. They could put blue for this is this is exactly like me and they colour it in brilliant for that icebreaker at the beginning of term. And this I've stolen, I say stolen, magpied <laughs> from our dear Paul Wright, who is in the background, designing your own book jacket. Fantastic for art, fantastic for talking about illustrations, talking about uh, the mechanics of a book. There's so many different cross curricular references. Ah, you'll be glad to know that I've come to an end. I've run out of puff. Um, so thank you so much for joining us for the webinar. These are just our contact details. If you do have any questions in terms of curriculum support, technical support, if there's something not working, it doesn't happen very often, but if there is something not working, email us and we will get straight back to you. So it's support at j2e.com. That's our website, lots and lots of information on there, just too easy.com. We've got a strong Twitter presence, so please join us on Twitter. Um, have a look for some activity ideas. If you want to tweet about us, you can. Please feel free to get your kids using this and tweet about them using it. And Facebook. And just to reiterate, this is our website for our webinars. So I will be putting this recording on here tomorrow or the day after. If you want to share it with colleagues, you can. And you can book on some of the further webinars, which may be more like an hour. So I might, I might change the timings of them because I've really struggled to keep into sort of an hour. Whew. Um, and that's about it. So I was just wondering if anybody has any questions or if we've had any questions that haven't, I'm sure this isn't the case, but that haven't been able to be answered by the three experts that I have in the background. I'm going to just open my chat. If you do want to ask me a question, feel free to pop it in the chat. Other statements for assessing pieces of work that you showed us earlier linked to the Northern Ireland curriculum. Um, no, we don't. We are awaiting the C2K 
curriculum statements. They are coming, we haven't had them yet. So we, we just, we, we're in that waiting stage. As soon as we do have those Northern Ireland curriculum statements, we'll put them in and we will make sure that we tweet about it. So please, not a sort of shameless plug to be going on Twitter, but please have a look um, and we, we keep an eye on Twitter for those sort of announcements. I'm just going to say a very quick uh, couple of thank yous. Thank you, Nikki, for uh, for, for host, uh, hosting the uh, the webinar. It's not been an, an easy health week for you, so uh, we really appreciate you uh, uh, stepping in and, and uh, taking the webinar. Uh, and thanks also to, to all the teachers that have joined us. Uh, we're really excited about uh, the Just Too Easy tools in, in Northern Ireland. And uh, please do keep uh, talking to us on support at j2e.com or through any of the other channels. Uh, we'll hang around for as long as it takes. If anyone's got any questions, they can put that into the chat right now. Uh, and we'll hang around and do our best to answer any that we can. Uh, but thanks ever so much uh, for joining us. And hopefully we'll see you on another webinar before long. Thank you. Oh, I've had I've had a couple of questions. Thanks, Danny. Um, thank you very much um, for the person who has told me about the Blend Ed Northern Ireland um, working on the curriculum statements. I will get in touch with them. I think I have had something to do with them. Um, I'm in touch with so many people in Northern Ireland now. I may as well just move to Northern Ireland soon. It would be a lot easier. Um, I will have a look. So thank you for that advice. Now, I have had a quick question about using an image created in paint as a background image for a right. Um, so if you do need to go, please feel free. Don't feel like you have to hang around, but I'm just conscious that I want to answer this question because it is a brilliant um, activity. I used to do this a lot as an inspiration for writing, getting the kids going out and taking photographs and editing the picture and then using that as an inspiration for writing. So this is a good question. Well done. Um, so we can create a picture in paint. So just to do this very quickly, I'm going to use a pre-made picture. Okay, so imagine I've just draw, drawn this. Now I can save it as a working document, but that's not going to work. What I just need to do actually quickly is I just need to make a little bit of a change that it allows me to save it. What you have to do to use it in right as a background is you have to save it as an image. And that is this button here, save as image. So what that will do is it saves it just the picture itself. So it won't save any um, audio over the top unfortunately. You can also save things as a stamp. So that will create almost like a character. So that's really, really good if you're getting kids to draw characters for illustrations, maybe they're using it in mix or animate or um, in write or any of those. Okay. So now what we can do is we can go to write. You'll see these are the templates here. We can go to pictures and there's that picture that we have created in paint. We can add that in and there is our document. Now, I probably should have picked a, a painter that didn't have writing over the top of it already. Uh, I'm going to blame my baby brain. Um, but you can then, you know, use all the normal stuff. So we could say on the barn, hit enter by Miss Kimball. There you go. Oh, that would help if I could spell my own name right. Uh, we can highlight that. We can change the font. We can change the size. OK, so you can write over the top of that document and then you can hit save on that. And you can add, you know, things like your text to speech and your audio. So that's how you would combine a paint activity then with a writing activity as well. So thank you for that question. That was good. I always enjoy the ones where I have stuff to answer at the end. <laughs> Um, has anybody else got any questions? Any anything that they'd love to be able to do with their students? I'm guessing not. Right, well, I'm getting no sort of chats come through. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, I've really enjoyed giving this webinar. I've really enjoyed talking at you. Um, so please join us for more webinars, point your colleagues in the direction of our key stage specifically. I've got key stage one, key stage two, and a special SEND webinar next week. They are all filling up quickly. I know a couple of them, I think, are sold out already, a couple of the sessions. So please book on for those. And um, 
stay in touch, enjoy using JIT, enjoy using J2E5, and um, we hope to see you again. Right, thank you.